G'day guys, my name is Wildcard and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for following my contents, I really do appreciate it. Wherever you are around the world, please make sure you stay safe and look after your families and friends. Stay strong guys, we will get through this together. And hopefully this video will give you a little bit of break from whatever you are struggling with around the world at the moment and hopefully you can enjoy today's content. Now, let's get on with it, let's talk about today's content. All of our rugby fans have argued constantly on YouTube channel, YouTube chats, Reddit, Twitter, wherever you are. I can see this argument everywhere. Which team is the number one team in the world? And is the Rugby World Rankings accurate? The Rugby, rugby World Rankings is a cumulative ranking throughout the years. So some of the teams might have, for example, South Africa had a huge buffer coming into 2021 and thus giving them some people might think a little bit of an advantage coming into this year so what i've done is reset every team to 85 points and i play the whole season for each team accumulated all the points for the entire year and recompiled the rankings for 2021 rugby world internationals okay so some of the methodologies i've used obviously i just mentioned i've reset every team to 85 points the rank is updated every match and winning games it's pretty similar to what the rugby world ranking does at the moment actually every game you are uh, you by winning a, a win game away game gives you a little bit more points than winning the game at home and my in my rankings it's approximately you get approximately double the points for winning away and then also obviously the bigger the gap between your uh, between one team from the other team's ranking the more points you're going to be exchanged so that's that's basically how rugby world rankings working right now anyway so i i have that for my rankings as well and obviously as a result of the reset there could be some things that look a little bit strange like some teams that play very few matches and against you know very easy opponents see them very high up in the rank so any teams that played fewer than five matches i just didn't consider them and also uh with what's remained of the teams someone's still you know looking a little bit funny as well but we don't consider that all we wanted to do is to reset the rankings and see how things will play out so we that's that's all we can do right so whatever else happens it's up to the teams it's up to it's out of my hands so yeah let's not worry too much about that let's just look at what we can control which is set everyone into an equal playing field and see what happens right and also in the rankings if there's a draw i've given the away team essentially a small win so the away team gets a small win if it's a draw it's you know usually you know winning away it's considered more difficult than winning at home so in that logic being a, getting a draw away you also get a small win considered essentially anyway let's have a look at the rankings from my experiment coming in at number 13 is italy italy has a very tough year they lost almost every game except for one game against uruguay right at the end of the year they play absolute top world class opponents as well come out of the six nations and then play argentina all blacks very very difficult opponents so italy had a really tough year finished off at 80.7578 by the end of the year on the number 13 spot on the on the tree and also yeah italy is one of the teams that deserves more credit than their rankings because they are actively playing very 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 tough international matches in their um in their calendar year only one win but they've had a really tough year coming in at number 12 another team who had a really tough year the tongans played six games and they lost all of the six games the tongan team were playing with you know um guys from you know amateur guys from club rugby and their coach is currently in uh, hurt at home due to an attack todai kefu so the tongan team is really struggling but all credits to the tongan team they're still able to, you know, never give up. The fighting spirit is still there. They were out on the on, on, on the flights, out in bubbles, out in quarantine, fighting for every every game, fighting for themselves, fighting for their nation. Really, really proud effort. They're squeezing at number 12 position at 80.97 points. At number 11, 
Japan. This Japan Japan haven't played since the 2019 Rugby World Cup. They came in this year with a game against British and Irish Lions. And again, Japan had a very tough season. They only managed to squeeze out one win against Portugal. And they've got a very difficult season against all the other teams, losing all the other games. Uh, 83.87 is Japan's final score after five test matches in 2021. Uh, coming in at number 10. Now we're up to the top 10 now. Coming in at number 10, Argentina. Another team that's had that played the entire year away. Okay, This is extremely difficult for a team to play 11 test matches and all of them away games. It's incredibly difficult. And their coach has been talked about. They were in bubble the whole time. And they were just absolutely struggling. Can't see their families. And also you've been isolated and everything. Const constantly adjusting the time zones. Very, very tough for the Argentinians. And despite that, they were still able to squeeze out a draw against, uh, against Wales. And a win against Wales in July against the Welsh team that was... Uh, stripped off the core players to the Lions tour, but nevertheless, still got two uh, uh, really good results there. And also towards the end of the season, had a really good match against France and another uh, win against Italy. So overall, the Argentinians, despite how tough they are, you really show their resilience, able to pull out some of those wins and earn themselves 84.23 on the top, just squeezing into the top 10 spot on the ladder. Number nine is Fijians. Again, the Fijians, actually had a draw and a win, a win against France, a draw against Georgia. Saw them actually just squeezing ahead of the starting point of 85. So 85.18 is their ultimate score. They started the season against the All Blacks. They also had a really good game against the Wild, uh, Wales. So Fiji is one of the teams where they only play five games, but I felt like if they had opportunities to play more games, they probably could have earned more points. They were very, very impressive against All Blacks and Wales. So, yeah, I will I'll be very. I really wanted to see the Fijians play more matches. I think the points could be higher if they were given the opportunity. To be quite frank, uh, coming in at number eight is the Wallabies, the team that played the second most Test matches in 2021. My team, the Wallabies, should be the number one team in the world. But we reset the ladder. We looked at everything. In uh, we gave everyone. We give it. We gave everyone a fresh start. And the Wallabies had a good serious win against France in July and then had a bit of a low against the All Blacks. Came back with a spectacular performance against the Springboks and then finished off the Spring Tour on a, yeah, on a, on a low uh, away in Europe. And ultimately, the Wallabies were just able to get ahead of the 85 points they were given at the start, 85.2. Uh, very tough season for the Wallabies, but I mean, not as bad as some of the, like, you know, Argentina. The Wallabies did able to play a lot of the games at home, so they probably should have done a bit better. But, you know, yeah. So the only people that can blame is the uh, themselves, to be fair. The Wallabies probably could have done a bit better here. 85.2 coming in at number... Eight coming in at number seven is the Welsh. Now Wales actually had a really won the Six Nations earlier this year, so they had a really good start early off. And then in the mid mid section of the year, around July, Wales actually struggled a bit against Argentina with some of the team being away for the Lions tour. And then in the uh, November international series, the Welsh team was stripped off a lot of the players due to injuries. So again, they were struggling. So they ended up with the year 85.37, a uh, lot worse off than they were at the beginning of the year. And yeah, that's just the way the the, the cookie crumbles, I guess, for Wales. And uh, squeezing in at number seven. At number six, Scotland. Scotland were able to get to number six spot. They actually had a really good season this year. They finished off really strong in the autumn, uh, in the November internationals. <clears throat> they had a pretty stellar Six Nation as well. They were able to, yeah, basically the, the, what cost Scotland in some of the Six Nations games. They lost home games. Uh, it's a, a couple of really important home games that they lost and cost them quite a bit of points at the start of the Six Nations. And then they were able to slowly accumulate points back, eventually adding up at 86.52 and the number six spot on the 2021 World Rankings. Now, top five, coming in at fifth spot. You're going to be a little bit surprised with this one. I'll give you one second to think which team you might think it is. 
No, it's not them. It's France. Yes, I bet everyone thought England. No, it's France. France comes in at number five. Uh, and you might say, well, how, how did this happen? Well, the French team had a okay 50-50 uh, uh, Six Nations. Their, their biggest loss came at the end of the Six Nations where they lost to Scotland at home, which cost them quite a lot of points because Scotland was really down at that point in their points. So France actually lost a lot of points there. And then France actually played a really tough opponent as in Australia against the Wallabies away from home are not really able to accumulate much, many uh, any points there and then they end up with autumn got a little bit of points back in the autumn uh, in the in the november test series and finally finished the season off with a very 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 impressive strong performance against the all blacks but they were not able to get those points that they lost back for winning against the all blacks at home so overall the french guys actually played very tough opponents for the entire year and you know i think getting 87.72 points for the for the quality of opponents that they play this year is actually very very impressive despite them only being fifth on the rankings number four yes it's england and number four quite the opposite position to france england actually had a really really poor six nations and then in july uh and then uh and then you know early november England were able to get a lot of kind of easy points, accumulation there. And if they actually, what England did really well is follow that momentum, finished off the year with a strong win against the Wallabies and a very, very, very lucky tight win against the Springboks at the end to see them squeeze just ahead of France on the number four spot in the rankings. And that's just the way it is. So the quality of the team that in the France played is a little bit harder which saw the France team a little bit lower against England uh, overall. So that's just the way it is, guys. Unfortunately, coming in at number three is the Springboks. The Springboks probably could be... Uh, it, it probably... It, it, uh, the Springboks is the third most played team in the world. Technically, they could potentially... You know, depends how you look at it. They that they're, they're technically... Uh, played 15 test matches, but they two of the matches was you know the South Africa A side, so it's still the same players that from the Springboks team that played, but technically it's the South African A side, and I didn't want to include them as the official uh, Springbok stats because that's not even considered as official Springbok stats by the Springboks, so I'm taking those out. But overall, the Springboks actually had a really really long tough 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 season as well. They started off the season at home against the British Irish Lions with a win, and then they came over to Australia, had a bit of a low against the Wallabies, and then finished off their season very strong overseas in in uh, in Europe. I think the Springbok fans would be pretty proud of their performance. They got really unlucky in the final game against England, just losing by a hairline, a game they probably should have won. Overall, the Springboks, I think, have one of the probably the most impressive seasons uh, for out of all the teams this year, you know, winning the Lions tour, finish off strong in the Autumn Nation series, uh, not November Internationals, and also finished off quite well in the uh, Rugby Championships as well, and whilst being away. So 88.44 points for the Springboks, uh, very, very good effort. Now, coming in at number two, is Ireland. Ireland actually had a really poor start in their Six Nations due to Johnny Sexton injuries, but then they were able to get themselves back ahead and then they just slowly building that momentum had a few games in the autumns that kind of just built built on their uh that momentums and then eventually finished off the season with a big win against the all blacks and another big win against argentina to finish off the year accumulating quite a string of winning you know continuation uh you know what do you call it a win streak here going wins after johnny Sexton come back for uh for ireland very very impressive stuff for, for ireland uh, the finish of 89.79, quite deservingly so, and uh, very impressive for some of the stuff they've done the game against the All Blacks. And finally, the number one team in the world is the All Blacks, the team that works the hardest, played the most test matches officially uh, than any other team in the world. They've literally, you know, taken the sport and 
shown it all around the world and their performance has been you know if, if anything they've worked harder than everyone else to earn this spot at number one 90.29 points some people might say that some of the opponents that they played were easy opponents but nevertheless you know they they only lost three matches and they've won all the rest of the the, the best win win loss ratio for 2021 and what i can say uh in the end of the day the team that wins the most after a reset is the team that comes out on top and the all blacks i think yeah truly do deserve the number one team sport in the world just by how hard they've worked for the entire year uh, just the fact that they play more games than any other team in the world uh maybe except for the bring box spring box so yeah uh, i think well deserved coming in at number one 90.29 let me know your thoughts in the comments down below do you agree with this rankings do you have a better way of ranking the teams and uh let me know your thoughts on the comments down below here's the results once again for you to look at uh, thank you for following my content guys thank you for watching my video i look forward to seeing you guys again next week cheers